What's going on guys? If you are a fan of Stevie Ray Vaughan, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. Today we are in East Troy, Wisconsin, and we are going to head over and try to find the exact crash location. Let's go. Here we are in East Troy, Wisconsin. This is Alpine Valley Music Theater. And it was here that Stevie Ray Vaughan played his final concert on August 26th of 1990. Now it was a sold out crowd with nearly 40,000 people in attendance. Eric Clapton was performing and at the end of the night, Clapton brought out Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimmy Vaughan, Robert Cray, and Buddy Guy, a collection of some of the best guitar players on the planet. Now the group played an extended jam version of Sweet Home Chicago before calling it a night. Now this is the music theater right down here. You can't see a lot right now because there's, you know, it's closed for the season. And uh, But this is the music theater and everybody has, who somebody has played here from the Grateful Dead to Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith. I've seen Kiss and Motley Crue here. Uh, Pearl Jam has played here. Everybody that you can think of has played here. And usually this parking lot right here is jammed to the brim with cars but you line up right down there, uh, right down this, this paved uh, path to get to the theater. Now behind the theater over here is Alpine Valley Ski Resort, which is where the next part of our story is gonna take place. So the people at the ski resort were kind enough to grant permission to go onto their property today, and we're gonna try to find the exact location where the helicopter crashed. So I'll tell you a little bit more over there. Here's one more look at the front entrance of Alpine Valley Music Resort. Now let's head over to the crash site. Now on that fateful night, thousands of people would have made this journey out of Alpine Valley Music Theater heading towards home, completely unaware of the tragic events that would happen probably just within an hour after this. So we are heading outside of Alpine Valley right now. There's the sign. And the ski resort is right next door. And we're heading there right now. Now as we head into the ski resort now, I'll tell you a little bit more. Now Stevie Ray Vaughan, if you're not familiar with him, he was born in 1954. He was one of the most influential guitarists of his generation. His band was called Double Trouble and his mainstream career really only spanned about seven years. Now if you can see in the background, kind of towards the right of the screen, you see what looks like a little tent. That is the entrance of the backstage area of Alpine Valley. Now it was just on the other side of this, where this golf course is, which is where the helicopters took off on that night. Now shortly after midnight on August 27th, 1990, four helicopters left Alpine Valley carrying performers and crew members. They were heading to Midway Airport in Chicago. Now they used helicopters here since there's only one road in and out of Alpine Valley and it's usually packed with fans leaving the show. Now only three helicopters made it to their destination. The other was a mangled wreckage on a ski slope behind the music venue less than a mile from takeoff and that's where we're headed right now. Now these are the ski hills up ahead of me now and a lot of people have done videos on this but I have yet to see one that actually went up on the ski slope and found the exact location. So that's what we're going to try to do. Now for a little more backstory, the day of his concert at Alpine Valley, Stevie Ray Vaughan the night before had had a dream, or a premonition if you will, that something happened to him, that he passed away, and that he saw mourners. Now he told people that he was disturbed but oddly at peace. And it was only 24 hours later that that, uh, that, that nightmare became reality. Now, Stevie Ray Vaughan was one of only five people that were killed on this crash. Now, they included Stevie Ray Vaughan, who was only 35 at the time. The others killed were pilot Jeff Brown, agent Bobby Brooks, bodyguard Nigel Brown, and tour manager Colin Smythe. Now, the coroner's inquest found that all five men died instantly from their injuries, and wreckage wasn't discovered until the next morning. It was also said that Stevie Ray Vaughan had many unsurvivable injuries, including transection and dissection of the aorta, multiple skull fractures, a ruptured spleen, liver, and fractures at the right thigh bone and ribs. 
The debris for the crash was spread out over about 200 feet, it said, and it was up this hill. Now this is, if you ever come here, this is the Mohawk Hill. A lot of people don't exactly know which hill it is um, where his crash was, but this was confirmed to me by people who work at Alpine Valley Ski Resort. And they also were kind enough to not only let me come up here and film this and show you guys, but they also told me where the memorial plaque is, which we'll also go and see. Now, as we get up here, people want to know what caused the crash. Now, the helicopter departed in very foggy conditions with visibility under two miles, according to a local weather forecast. It was discovered that pilot Jeff Brown had an instrument rating to fly in an airplane, but not in a helicopter. Now, when they took off, they did so at a lower altitude, and it's believed that the fog played a role in underestimating the altitude needed to clear this ski hill. Now, it was just up here where this crash took place. I should also add that if you ever come up here, this hill is no joke. This was very, very difficult to get to the top of. Now, from all accounts, pictures, video, and everything else that I've seen on this crash location, the wreckage would have been right down here and kind of spread up to the top a little bit here. Now, you could see this hill, the big one here in the background in several of the pictures, although it's a little bit different. There's a little bit different slope, and the, these trees that are here now weren't there then but it was on this side of the hill where that tragic crash happened. Now we're gonna head down and see if we can find this memorial marker. A lot of people have told me about it, although I have never seen it, but we'll see if it's here and we'll confirm it. But funeral services were held for Stevie Ray Vaughan on August 31st of 1990 at Laurel Land Cemetery in Dallas, Texas. An estimated 3,000 mourners joined a procession led by a white hearse. But it all happened right up here. Now it's kind of neat to be able to step foot on a place where such a big piece of music history occurred, although it is a tragic location. But it's neat to be able to see a place like this and to document it and to show you guys where exactly this happened. Now, I found the memorial marker. I would think that there would be something a little bit grander and a little bit easier to find. This was not an easy thing to find. It took me probably a half hour to find it. But it's on the. It's about halfway up this telephone pole. And this telephone pole, it's, it's kind of hard to get a shot. Hopefully you guys can see this. But this is the memorial marker. And it's a little bit away from where the crash site actually happened. But this is about halfway down the hill. This is not on the Mohawk Hill. This is on the hill, um, if you're looking at the mountain, it's the hill to the right of the Mohawk Hill, about halfway down. If you're looking down the hill, it's on the left-hand side. Now you can scan the QR code for Stevie Ray's Greatest Hits. There's a little uh, bit of information on these sheets. The gimbal doesn't really want to cooperate and show you guys a good uh, image of this, but it's a, a little bit higher than arm's reach, so I'm trying to do the best I can by showing you guys this. Now, this was just a tragic day in music history. It was a sad day in the history of the state of Wisconsin and the area of Alpine Valley. Alpine Valley is one of the legendary music venues, and it's just a, I mean, it's just a tragic location but it's so quiet and peaceful up here. It's almost eerie, and I'm the only person around this ski slope. It's off season. Uh, the hotel, I believe, is closed, but they were gracious enough to grant me permission to come up here. Now, if you guys ever want to come here and visit and pay your respects to Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, just contact Alpine Valley Ski Resort and be sure just you know ask ask permission it's the nice thing to do they don't seem to mind you coming up here but it's you know you feel less intrusive if you ask permission and let them know that you're here but they are very cool about letting people come up here and pay their respects now down at the bottom of the hill there is a path here and there was news footage back in 1990 when all this happened 
of the hearse picking up the bodies at the bottom of the hill and then driving them back down the road, which I'll take you down that road as I leave, and you can kind of see what was Stevie Ray Vaughan's last ride up here in the Midwest. Now, he was taken to the Elkhorn, I believe it was the Elkhorn Medical Examiner's Office where his body was officially identified, uh, and his, it was his brother that officially identified the body, which would have been a tragic thing because he had shared the stage with his brother just, you know, the night before. Now this right here would have been the final ride of Stevie Ray Vaughan leaving Alpine Valley Ski Resort for the final time. Now thank you guys for joining me on this adventure. This is a spot that I, I've done a video here before, but I was really excited to actually get permission and find the exact location. So thank you guys so much and have a great night.